Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Parth Goel and I am a consultant psychiatrist at Parth Hospital Ahmedabad. In my last video, we had discussed about one of the most common psychiatric illnesses that is major depressive disorder. In this video, we will be talking about the treatment of major depressive disorder. Most of us are aware of the treatment of major depressive disorder to be that which is done with medicines or with psychotherapy. However, in this video, we will be talking about other methods of treatment which are used in certain uh, reserve cases or certain severe cases which are very effective and have a lot of misinformation about them. There are three main treatment methods for patients with major depressive disorder. The first is ketamine infusion. The second is repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, also abbreviated as RTMS. And the third is electroconvulsive therapy, abbreviated as ECT or PPT, which stands for brief pulse therapy. In this video, we will be covering in detail about electroconvulsive therapy or also known as brief pulse therapy. Electroconvulsive therapy is the gold standard of treatment for major depressive disorder. Electroconvulsive therapy has been around for more than 70 years and has undergone major major changes over the past 70 years. It is a safe, reliable, effective and fast acting method of treatment which provides relief in a very short period of time and this relief that this uh, treatment provides is long lasting. Which are the conditions of depression in which brief pulse therapy or electroconvulsive therapy is used? Most importantly, ECT is used in patients with severe depression who have suicidal ideas, who have attempted to commit suicide or in patients who have treatment resistant depression that means the illness is no longer responding to medication and the symptoms are severe and persistent. ECT can also be used to treat depression associated with bipolar mood disorder also known as bipolar depression. ECT is used to treat various other psychiatric illnesses but for the scope of this video we will be limiting our discussion to its role in the treatment of major depressive disorder. There are two main types of ECT courses that are given. The first is acute ECT course and the second is maintenance ECT course. Acute ECT course is a course of 6 to 12 ECTs which is aimed at reducing the current symptoms of a patient suffering from depression. Maintenance ECT course is given after the completion of an acute course and may be used to keep the patient symptom free for a long period of time. Please note that in maintenance ECT is not applicable for all patients. It is used only in a select number of patients in which after a full course of acute ECT, patients relapse and will require additional ECTs to be symptom free. Let me talk about the procedural details. ECT is now given as an OPD procedure. That means there is no need for admission for ECT. An acute course of ECT will typically have 6 to 12 sessions. The minimum number of ECTs given is 6. Depending on the condition, maybe additional ECTs might be required. The first step in giving ECT is to anesthetize the patient. The duration of anesthesia is 10 minutes and the type of anesthesia given is general anesthesia. This is very very important because the ECT that is currently allowed is known as modified ECT where, wherein the modification is the use of anesthesia and muscle relaxant. No patient can ever be given ECT without administering anesthesia. By administering anesthesia, the patient is completely sedated and is pain-free. The patient does not experience any pain, any unpleasantness. It is similar to the anesthesia given for any major surgery. The only thing is, it is shorter in duration. In ECT, the duration of the electrical stimulus is anywhere between 1 to 2 seconds, which generates a therapeutic seizure, which can last from anywhere, to anywhere between 15 to 50 seconds. Usually, the process is completed in less than one minute. After the seizure is completed, the patient takes around 10 to 15 minutes to awaken from anesthesia and once the patient is feeling comfortable and is vitally stable, he or she can be discharged. The entire process of ECT can take anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes and the patient can be discharged after the, patient, after the process is completed and the patient is feeling comfortable. Coming to the most important question, now what are the side effects with ECT? Let me first tell you the most common side effects with ECT and then we will discuss the more uncommon or the uh, more questionable side effects of ECT. 
The most common side effect of ECT is headache that happens because of the generation of a seizure. Usually headache is uh, terminated using any basic painkiller for example diclofenac sodium. Headache is also usually only seen during the first couple of sessions and usually not seen after that. Jaw pain is a result of the muscle relaxant that is used. Again, it is self-limiting. If at all required, a diclofenac sodium tablet can be used to treat the jaw pain. The effects on memory or uh, after a full after ECT are usually self-limiting. There is a retrograde amnesia that means events prior to ECT up to three to five hours duration can be forgotten by the patient. But this is always self-limiting. These events are usually remembered back again within an interval of 7 to 21 days. There is no loss of memory. There is no damage to any structure in the brain. There are a lot of myths surrounding ECT. The most common reason for these myths is the media portrayal of ECT where it is shown as a person being held onto a bed by multiple people who is awake and is given electrical shot or electrical shock and is convulsing uh, violently out of control with frothing from his mouth. These kind of images have put the fear of God in patients and they are reluctant to accept or adopt one of the most effective treatment modalities available in modern psychiatry currently. Let me assure you, nothing of such sort ever happens in any patient during ECT. First of all, the reason behind that is that the patient is anesthetized, so the patient has no feeling of anything that is happening to her, him or her. And secondly, the use of muscle relaxants in modern ECT has ensured that there is no excessive violent movement during the period of electrical stimulation. Also, I want to bring to attention a very important point in this video. A normal AAA cell would be 1 amperes uh, uh, in uh, strength. The strength of electrical current in ECT is 0.8 amperes or 800 milliamperes and the charge that is delivered during every ECT for everybody who is technically sound out there is anywhere between 112 millicoulomb to 160 millicoulombs which is a very low charge which is not capable of causing any kind of uh, damage short term or long term to the brain. There are also certain other myths about ECT, for example, ECT causes an increase in illness. ECT is a treatment to an illness, it does not cause an increase in the illness. ECT does not need to be repeated again and again if the patient is compliant with medication. There is no long-term effect on memory with ECT. ECT-induced memory deficits are temporary and will automatically resolve in a period of 7 to 15 days. Now coming to another important question. Is ECT used worldwide? Yes, ECT is used globally across all countries including the most developed countries like the US, UK, Australia. In fact, there are advanced centers for delivering ECT in all those countries and ECT is used for a wider range of conditions than what it is used in India. For more information about ECT and for a detailed explanation, please visit our website www.parthospital.com. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you around in our next video. Thank you.